Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IX. Today we are going to be taking on FF9 Super Boss Ozma. In order to do that, I've spent quite some time off screen, largely doing a few side quests. Uh, you need to do the friendly monster side quest to actually use basic attack commands against Ozma, otherwise he floats out of reach. Also, that side quest makes him vulnerable to shadow elemental damage, which is a really important part of my strategy. Uh, and to do the full friendly monster side quest, you need to do part of the Chocobo hot and cold side quest, which sucks uh, to even reach Ozma. Real quick, let's just look over at exactly how much I've been doing off screen. So we're about 20 levels higher than we were before. Uh, it's extraordinarily difficult to do Ozma at a low level. There are some really specific strategies, but they involve, I mean, just as much, if not way more grinding and, and you know, catching a lot of frogs, killing a lot of dragons, stealing a lot of items, and just blitzing him. Uh, this is kind of a more long-term sustainable strategy, I would say. Uh, despite the levels being so high, not going to be hitting all that hard. Uh, I'm mostly just in this to survive and get some good turns in. Oh, shit. This is gonna... Like, I'll be honest, I have not prepared for much beyond this because I'm expecting a lot of ass kickings before finally winning. Ozma's really tough. So we come up to this Eidolon cave, and upon inspection, you know, upon going through it, this is Ozma, who is, in appearance, kind of underwhelming. He appears to be some kind of ancient Eidolon based on where you find him. He's just a big, swirling, colorful globe. Top half is light, bottom half is dark, and you can kind of get an idea of which attack he's going to do. Holy shit, this is not good. Uh, based on which side he turns towards you. The dark side usually means something really bad and... Oh... Offense-oriented, light half usually means he's going to hit himself with Kirago or Asuna. Uh, so Meteor is the worst thing that he can start the fight with. And that's the second worst thing that he can do. If he does... Yup! Oh, y'all thought I was kidding when I said Ozma's extraordinarily difficult. Y'all thought I was just joking? No, nah, that's Ozma. Ozma will just wipe you out if he decides he doesn't feel like losing. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, so that's Ozma. That's what Ozma is like. That's what we have to look forward to, and this is why I did not really prepare to do anything after this fight today. Uh, let's minimize that a little bit by moving some dudes to the back. I don't think I did that before. I had Zidane and Steiner up front, even though that's not really gonna make a difference to their damage output. Steiner is gonna do 9999 no matter what. Zidane is a non-factor for us. Uh, also, the damage that Meteor does, that first attack he hit us with, is entirely random. As is his usage of it. So we went from the worst literally the worst possible luck we could have gotten, which is opening on some combination of Meteor and Curse, to the actual best thing that could have happened, which is him opening with Doomsday. Doomsday, much less scary than anything he can do to us. Literally no other attack is less scary than this, because Guard and everybody else got healed. Now Vivi is going to do his counter, which I uh, picked up off screen and taught him, which is called Return Magic. It's essentially just better reflect. We go through this whole animation again, and note who takes damage from Doomsday. It's everybody. Well, it hits everyone. 
Only Ozma took damage. He took 10k just hitting himself. He took actually closer to, what, 18, 20k? I didn't see how much damage he did to himself that very first hit. What a good attempt so far. That's fine. This is one of his counter attacks he can do. Uh, he can counter either with Kiraga or Berserk. So this is really good news. Let's, let's go back to talking a little bit about why this fight is so deeply fucked. Uh, the thing that makes Ozma so hard is that he cheats and he is very random. And when I say he cheats, I mean his ATB, his active time uh, battle gauge, behaves reactively. Which is not something that anyone else gets to do. His ATB will fill immediately as soon as you input a command. So he gets to take a lot more turns in a row in comparison to anything else that you fight. But there is a trick to him. Uh, his ATB can't fill up like that if you, in if you input commands while he's casting something. So you want to front load all of, your, all of your commands during his spell animations. And on top of that, he's the two different counters I mentioned, the Berserk. And the uh, the Kiraga, which can really wipe out a whole lot of your progress against him. Uh, you see, he only has 55,000 health, which is not terribly high for a super boss. Uh, for comparison, the lowest that Omega weapon in FF8 can have is 111,000. Uh, but your damage output in FF8 is generally a lot higher. And Omega Weapon wasn't regularly healing himself as a counterattack. Well, this is fucked. Uh, this, again, Meteor does like random amounts of damage split across the party, so... Not in love with that. Oh, Vivi can return magic on the Meteor. So... I already had a command queued up for Steiner as well. I mean, he's already going to attack, I should say. Well, this is still going to do a decent amount. <sighs> so let's run down all of his abilities. We've seen most of them. This is okay. Kiraga is fine. We just have to input our commands to get people up before that finishes. This is not why I wanted. That was already kind of going ahead of time. And a miss. So he is level 5 death. He is death. He is level 4 holy. He is regular holy. He is flare. He is flare star. Uh, he has doomsday. He is curse. He has mini, which can hit multiple targets, and that sucks. Wow, 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 wow. I cannot believe we survived that curse on low health. That's sort of lucky. I mean, we still have the issue of Steiner being minied up and not being able to do anything even with shock, but this at least gives us a chance to recover. Uh, so, I said Meteor, right? Well, we've seen that. This is still gonna be really, really touch and go. I mean, this is still most likely a wipe. I've already explained so much of Ozma that yeah, yeah is looking bad. That I'm leaving this attempt in anyway, and because this is the Ozma experience. Um, most of those abilities are really self-explanatory. Flare Star's damage, uh, the only noteworthy thing about that is it scales with your level. So it's actually pretty bad that Phoebe and Dagger are so high a level because their HP, their base HP scaling is not all that high. Uh, and Flare Star hits the whole party, so they're eating a whole lot of damage that they don't really have the HP to survive just because of how high a level they are. Really didn't factor that in. Uh, Curse can do massive damage, although we got we kind of got lucky with the last Curse. Fuck, this is not going well. We started off so so decently, too, with the Doomsday. The ideal is that this hits Zidane and does not kill him. 
which he should survive. Yeah, just barely. 3,300. Wow, we can... Mm, I don't want to say that we're necessarily pulling this back, but... We could really use another Doomsday. If we get another Doomsday, especially right now that Vivi is up and it will, we'll get two of them, uh, then we will have fully recovered. Please? Okay, death is actually pretty good. You know Ozma's a, a real bastard when the best thing that can happen is a character guaranteed dies, and even that wasn't guaranteed because it missed. Woo. Okay, we're on the road to recovering. A meteor right now will absolutely annihilate us. Oh, I didn't put a command. This is good. He get, he's going to take an extra turn. I thought that was his Kiraga triggering for a second. Well, 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 well. And I had that Phoenix down queued up as soon as I saw Dagger being targeted with death, even though it missed. Okay, so we're going to lose Dane here. We're going to preemptively cast Light before the death even hits, and that's not going to fill Ozma's ATB. And Zidane will get back up with a lot of health from the life. Now we just have to focus on remedying Steiner, so he won't be mini anymore. We have to get him some MP, so he can keep spamming Shock. And we'll be back on course. Even when you start off with good luck against Ozma, things can go so, so hairy. Especially if you don't have the capacity to just blitz him down. <sighs> so, his usage of abilities is almost entirely random. It's not like Omega Weapon in FF8 again, where you knew his exact pattern start to finish and you can plan around that. Uh, and the other thing that makes Ozma kind of a fascinating boss is that his AI is really smart. If you completely shut down something he can do, most of the time, he just won't try it. Oh my god! This is getting so close. Um, usually, there are some, some things that you can do to get around a few of his attacks. To, to trick his AI. Uh, but for the most part, like, if nobody in the party is susceptible to death, or level 5 death, he just will not cast it. Those are out of his random pool of attacks. If everyone has Reflect or Auto Reflect, he will not use Holy. And this is actually a really bad thing. Making yourself too immune to certain things that he does is actually a bad thing. Because it means that he's more likely to use his really devastating stuff like Meteor and Curse. So you actually do want to leave intentional vulnerabilities to certain things because they're less scary to deal with than eating a party-wide meteor or a meteor curse combo multiple times. We saw in the first fight it can still happen, but you just chalk that up to bad luck. If it does, uh, and you're you're basically just playing to maximize your chances of not eating two like catastrophically bad attacks in a row. And then just trying to band-aid things up as best you can while chipping away and hoping for some good turns uh, and, and minimizing the chances of bad luck while, while stalling out for the good luck. Alternatively, you can really grind hard and blitz him with like Zidane's maxed out thievery to do 10k, Freya's maxed out uh, the, the scaling dragon attack that does 10k guaranteed, Kina's uh, uh, frog drop that scales as you capture more frogs and does 10k. And then like either shock or hope for a nice return magic with Vivi and just wipe him out within a couple of turns. So as we've seen, Doomsday, like, yeah, again, about the, the good luck, Doomsday is the very best thing that Ozma can use against us. I can't believe we've recovered this well. This might still go bad, but. Some good misses. He's not he's not susceptible to level four holy, but still. Um the reason why Doomsday is so good for him to use against us as 
you kind of saw is the animation's really long, which means a few things for us. Everybody in this party has auto regen equipped, so it's it provides a really long time for the regen animation, to, or uh, the uh, regen to tick during that long animation. Uh, it's a really wide window in which to input attacks without filling his ATB up. And aside from that, it's something that you can get healed from while leaving others immune. Uh, so the Pumas pieces, the Egoist armlet, and Demon's Mail all offer either absorption or immunity against Shadow, which is what Doomsday does. Uh, because if the whole party absorbs Shadow, Ozma will not Doomsday. But, mmm, so good. This is going to be it, I think. I think this is going to do enough damage to Ozma to kill him. <laughs> Especially after the second one, BB is going to reflect her out of return. So if everybody absorbs Doomsday, Ozma won't do it. But if it's a ma if it's a mix of immunity and absorption, he'll still do it. Uh, he won't treat immunity the same way he treats absorption. It's the same idea behind using Chimera Armlets to immunize against his holies while not removing it from his attack pool. I can't believe that's... Oh, oh, okay. No, we're still good. This should do it. I haven't been keeping up with how much he's healed himself, but I think as long as this hits for the max 10k, should be good. So you're noticing that Doomsday also hits Ozma. And it can obviously be returned with VD's return magic. It's the whole reason VD is in this party, to be frank. Yeah! So it heals your party. It's a long window in which to regen ticks. It's a long window to input commands. And it's every time Ozma uses it, he's going to hit himself twice for almost 10k a pop. If you have VD or Amaranth with return magic. So, he casts Doomsday on you, you basically wind up with the whole party at full health, while he takes about 15 to 20k. Oh my god. Whew. I didn't expect to get that on the second shot, even though that was a long, long fight. Got the Ozma card. We're ever gonna use that. And they're nice enough to give you all your HP and MP back and restore status ailments. Uh, because Curse basically inflicts everything. It inflicts everything except, like, Berserk. Uh... So we have, like, Clear-Headed on everybody. We have... Bright Eyes on Zidane and Steiner, and we have, uh, Antibody on everyone. Just to prevent a few status ailments. There's nothing you can do to prevent Mini, for instance. The real pain in the ass about Curse is just the damage after you've prepped around the status ailments. It's what makes the combination of Curse and, and Meteor back-to-back -back so deeply devastating. So this is not a super heavy-hitting party. Uh, I didn't do the steel grinding, so D Zidane's thievery wouldn't have done 10k. It, it wouldn't have hit even for any appreciable damage. Garnet wasn't really there to output damage, she was just there to patch things up, cast life and Kiraga as needed. Vivi's output was insane, if for no other reason than he uh, returned to Doomsdays. Vivi probably wound up doing the most damage in that whole party and he didn't have to cast a spell. So he got to just sit there and be support for everyone. He just got to drop Remedies and Phoenix Downs. Uh, and if Ozma had done more Berserks, also Geishal Greens, which cure that. Woo. Steiner was kind of the, the workhorse. He was the most consistent source of high damage in the fight, the most reliable one. Still thinking Vivi probably put out about 35 to 40,000 damage just off of those two returned doomsdays. Oh, man. That fight can be really frustrating when you have bad luck, but, like, part of that fight is just minimizing how bad your luck can possibly be. 
it really doesn't determine your fate in that fight. Uh, also, I did mention that I was not prepared to do anything more than Ozma today. Uh, so, there's a little side quest here in Midain Sari. Once you come back here, I do not remember the trigger for it, so we'll just come back to Midain uh, Sari one more time in the near ish future, probably after we finish with Ibsen's Castle, which is where we're going next. Uh, the other important thing to note about some of my prep for that fight is obviously involves a lot of stuff from De uh, Deguario. I think the name is, which I visited just to synthesize a few high level things. Uh, as well as just doing a lot of Chocograph stuff to get Steiner his, one of his ultimate weapons, the Ragnarok. Uh, and the ultimate weapon for Garnet, which is the uh, Whale Whisker, which teaches her Kiraga. And, you know, picking up a couple of other things and just teaching them while I, uh, teaching them every available ability I could while grinding, so Garnet has her full suite of Eidolons now. We'll see a couple of them. Uh, one thing that I should mention about what we got from Ozma, the rewards were not terribly great. But what we did get is a full Pumas, which is what teaches her her final Eidolon. And we're gonna... Oh, we're gonna take it e easy and just blow off some steam from that very hard fight by using that here in Ibsen's castle as soon as Amarin is done being an edgy douche. Talking about how he's gonna go off by himself because mm, I prefer to work alone and I'm gonna prove that your friends are just dragging you down, Zdane. We're gonna let him go and we're gonna let him do his thing. While we just relax. I'm always torn between whether or not I love the Ozma fight or if I despise it. Because again, it really does come down to protecting most of the party against as many of his attacks as possible. While also leaving those intentional gaps so he'll still use certain abilities. Uh, and giving... Uh, uh, so he gives himself less of a chance to use the really devastating stuff. Like, you don't want everyone to be... Um, you don't want everyone's level to be a multiple of five because you don't want multiple people going down to level five death, but if n nobody's level is a multiple of five, then he's never going to do that, and that just increases the chances that he'll curse or meteor instead. Uh, so let's find that Pumas. Where are you at? There it is. So this will teach us our final Eidolon for Garnet, which is Ark, and we are not going to go very far into uh, do not be restricted by your knowledge and experience. This place turns the logic upside down. What's big is small, what's strong is weak, and heaven is earth. We're not going to go too far into Ibsen's castle today, because uh, again, I was not really prepared to do anything but spend probably two or three hours on Ozma. But we will at least go far enough in to see Ark's animation because Ark is brilliant. Love Ark so much. Suppose we're not gonna get random encounters. Game is just gonna hate me today on that. Do love the visuals of Ibsen's Castle though. It's a good dungeon. Let's see if we have anything. You say in the mog shop. Eh, actually, not that much that I care about. Not much that I need. I mean, the Ozma is really the only particularly difficult thing in FF9. Uh, the final boss can be a little tricky, but by and large, we're gonna be good to go for the rest of the game. Also note the theme. We'll talk about that more probably next time after we actually get a random encounter. Please! Please, video game, I'm begging you. 
The adrenaline's still like spiked from the from the Ozma fight. <laughs> oh cool, it's Cerberus. It was a guardian force and a boss fight in FF8. No such luck in 9. So that was a whole scary 1100 damage that Steiner took. I'm just gonna let this do its thing. Yeah, remember Ark? Hold on. Oh! Turns into a mecha! <laughs> so good! But hold on, we're not done yet. We ain't done yet! We ain't done yet! Nothing has ever been more overboard or overkill than this animation, and it was just to do less than 6,000 damage! It didn't even kill him! It's so good, though! Like, that's... Tell me that's not a worthwhile reward for fighting such an, a potentially frustrating boss. Like, that's such a good cathartic release! Alright, thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.